Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. My name is Dheeraj Lal. I'm Executive Director of Continuity and Resilience, which often we refer to for short as CORE. There's a rationale behind that. The first two letters, C and O, are the first two letters of continuity. The R and E are the first two letters of resilience. Together, it becomes CORE. And more than just four letters coming together, CORE typically means the nucleus, the fulcrum, the seed, something that keeps the world turning around. That's what we see ourselves contributing to. That's the, the goal that we've set for ourselves as an organization to help our clients and our customers keep things going, maintain the continuity, maintain the resilience. And also that's what we included in our logo. So our logo has uh, three arrows and those three arrows show continuous movement, continuous improvement, keeping on getting better and better. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of the events that we have planned for 2022 and importantly to check your willingness to be involved and participate. Essentially, we have three types of events that I'd just like to brief you about. Uh, my contact details are just coming up for my team and I. Do please let us know once you've seen this video, if it's of interest. Don't wait for us to contact you. Just write in to us. Thanks very much. The first of these three is dedicated conferences. We've got a very long history of successfully running dedicated conferences. We've probably done about 20 of these since we've been in existence. This is typically a one day event. We've held them in the past in the UAE, India and in Saudi. The first of these that I'd like to brief you about is a one day conference in the UAE. The likely date at this point in time seems to be the 17th of March. As soon as we sign with the hotel, this stands confirmed. Omnicron certainly is uh, giving us a little bit of worries. We had in fact almost signed the contract, but due to the latest outbreak of the virus, we hesitated. Most probably we will still go ahead. The fact is, the, is that the UE has some really strong controls in place and they act quite swiftly. Uh, most, there are multiple vaccination uh, controls in place and uh, most probably anyone in the country uh, is as well vaccinated as can possibly be. So we may still continue with that March 17 date. The location that we've used in the past could well be the location we'll use again. The address hotel, Dubai Mall. Fantastic location right next to the dancing fountains. It typifies Dubai. We like that location. We know them well, they know us well. So most probably we, we may use that same location again. So while the event, the location, the model will be substantially the same as we've done in the past, a mixture of round table discussions, some individual presentations, a lot of topical issues popping up, hopefully great feedback as we normally get. What's going to be different this time is that we intend for the event to be in Arabic, which means that the speaker presentations will be in Arabic. The slides will be in Arabic to the extent possible. We'll have the slides having subtitles in English. I'm not promising, but we're going to try. We may have a few presentations by non Arabic speaking people, gurus but that will be the exception more than the rule and there may not be any at all. So substantially it's going to be an event by the people, of the people, for the people. So what's interesting is that even though we say that this event will be in Arabic mostly, it's not that English is absolutely absent from the agenda. In fact, I expect that almost everyone at the event will be highly proficient in English, if not absolutely flawless. Some may not be very fluent in speaking English, almost all would understand it pretty well. Now we also at the event intend having an exhibition area as we've had in the past. And anyone who's been to our past events will know what we're talking about. Not very different from what I've seen at uh, DRJ or at the BCI conference or, or others. The exhibition will be in English. And I think they'd expect that because uh, mostly a lot of the screens may be in English. Uh, perhaps some people presenting would be more English friendly. Uh, so that's acceptable from the purpose of, of making a demo and having a conversation. Um, I really don't see any major challenge. Um, so I'd say about 80% would be 
highly proficient in English and maybe about 15 to 20 percent. English may not be their strong point, let's put it that way. And there may be just a handful who can just, just about manage with a smattering. Even they understand English, certainly. And therefore, anyone who is looking to generate revenues from the Middle East, be it through products or tools, or maybe a workshop or assignments, consulting, training, assessments, things like that, e-learning packages, do let us know if you would like to participate in the one-day on-site event. This will be a paid event for most attendees. This will be a paid event for most sponsors and exhibitors. Certainly speakers would typically come in for free, but most speakers would be industry speakers as opposed to product development organizations. So that's one event that we'd invite you to take part in. As different from the UE event, the India event will probably mostly be fully online. As of this point in time, we don't plan to have an on-site event per se. We've run the India event again for almost 10 years now. So this will be very similar. So again, if you're looking to spread your knowledge to an Indian audience or looking to promote your services for an Indian audience, then do let us know. The likely date for the India event is early April, probably the first week. Online presentations, if there are sponsors who may want a physical event, we could by mutual consent organize a particular event in one of the cities. If it seems that that will be a success, if it seems that there may be enough people who may want to attend it physically, that could be considered. So again, don't hold back, reach out, let us know, and we can take it from there. So these are two of the dedicated events that we're looking to organize. Uh, category one, possibly, if I can call it that. Category two would be our ongoing webinars. So what we'd like to conduct on an ongoing regular basis is what we may call the core knowledge series. Typically shorter sessions on an ongoing basis as different from a summit. The summit that we mentioned earlier was full day packed and the global summits were even of longer duration. It's so around the clock. Our math summit was across time zones. We started off in Australia and we ended up in the US with 14 hours roughly. Critically, uh, it's a long day. It's tough. It's tough to pull out those two days dedicated. We'd like to make it slightly easier to attend and simpler. And therefore, we are planning a series of regular webinars, at least uh, two a month, could be even four a month. So what we plan in terms of the knowledge series is uh, something much shorter. If it's of shorter duration, they would typically be free, probably about half an hour to an hour. If it's longer duration with a specific takeaway, then it could be on a paid basis, something like a three hour or a day, maybe even more. So again, if you are a provider of knowledge and you're looking to expand to our markets and have people in our markets also plug into your sessions, let us know. And we can look at that. We already do it for quite a few others. Happy to expand the portfolio for the global summit. We had about 3,000 plus registrations, 3,100 plus, in fact, registrations. So that should give you an idea of, of the kind of numbers that you can expect at some of our events. And I hope that is indicative that this could be good return on your time and effort, at least, if nothing else. So we plan to have these sessions dedicated to our audience as of now, which is mostly the Middle East and India, typically on, on a Tuesday or Wednesday. And uh, we invite anyone who's interested to come share their knowledge and their time with our audience. At least in the past, given the numbers we've had, we believe that it would be very well attended. Let's put it that way. Again, we'd be very happy to have industry speakers talking about their experience, specific issues, and we'll come out with a list of topics, but uh, don't stick to that. It's more about what you'd like to talk about. That's an open agenda. Mutually, we can agree. So it would probably be worth your while in terms of getting at least lots of visibility, a lot of thank yous, uh, impacting a lot of people with your time and your efforts. So if you did have to choose an event to show goodwill, where you generously share your thoughts and your experiences and your time with others, please choose us. We had some fantastic ratings on our previous summits and uh, excellent comments. So we are very enthusiastic. I think normally it's agreed that what we do, we do pretty well. And our summits stand apart some pretty good branding and a great audience. And as I said, if you're willing to share your thoughts and your ideas, 
uh, I believe that this audience gratefully accepts them and it's a win-win situation. Uh, we'd also offer you the choice of running longer sessions, deep dive sessions, maybe about three hours, be it a workshop, be it a training session, be it a simulation, be it a, a tools demonstration. So let us know if you have a specific idea to give out, say a BI workshop, a risk assessment, a risk of recovery strategies. We're probably coming up soon with one on how to do well in an audit. These are skills that people are looking for. Maybe an industry specific case study of the dynamics of that industry for anyone who's keen to learn. In a one hour session, normally you may not be able to get very hands on. It may not be too interactive. It's more like a one way lecture with a few questions, which is good, uh, which is at least you've got your message across. You also have the option of running longer workshops, which could be free or paid. I believe the longer workshops would have a very specific takeaway, some specific knowledge dissemination, increase of skills, increase of hands-on understanding, perhaps even some exercises or some tools. What I like about the three hour session is that it separates the men from the boys. Typically you'd only get a serious audience for this. Not too many people who are not committed or keen will attend a three hour session. So someone who's coming in for a three hour session consciously normally is keen, is knowledge hungry and could well be a potential future candidate for something else. So maybe may looking to purchase your product or may, may be looking to engage you for a longer assignment. So it's a good audience. So that's a model that you can also consider. Normally a three hour session will attract someone who's really serious. So it acts like a bit of a filter to make sure that the audience you have is generally keen and committed and therefore it's a pretty good source for you to get leads. Uh, that has been our experience with some other uh, providers that when they've run the three hour session, they've got some really good audience. Uh, that audience has followed up later uh, for product sales, a lot of sales in the pipeline and therefore it's been a pretty good experience. So I believe that's a proven model and give them real good takeaways. So when they walk away, it's, it's three hours well spent. Uh, they are clear on the value that you add and uh, hopefully they come back to you for more uh, and actually sign up. So that's, that's an ideal situation. Um, so for anyone who's looking to uh, provide something serious and tangible, uh, be it a workshop, a simulation, tools, etc., uh, consider the three hour workshop where we agree the commercials mutually. So look forward to hearing from you on that. And of course, as I said, don't wait for us to contact you. Just write in to us and let's get the ball rolling. So other than our events, I also wanted to mention that we do a lot of promotion on social media, mostly YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, a bit on Insta, a bit on Facebook. We do a regular newsletter on risk and resilience. So if you have a point to share, let us know and we'll try and put it on that newsletter if it's significant enough. We run podcasts. Typically they all cross 100 views and I think the maximum is about almost touching 400 at this point in time. If you're looking to launch something, you have a thought to share, you have a good idea, you have an article, let's write a white paper together. Just let us know. We have the platform, we have the market, we have a great audience that is highly, highly appreciative. In general, for those who don't know the market, India, of course, is huge as a market in terms of its potential. And a lot of companies have India as their second largest workforce globally outside of, of the HO. A lot of companies in India are 20,000 plus. One of them is about 450,000 people worldwide. There are many in between. 20,000 itself is a big number. So India's volume, a price sensitive, but volume. The Middle East is more value. Uh, the Middle East is state of the art. The Middle East is, uh, we want the best and we're willing to pay for it. Anyone who's passed through the UAE, and many of the other countries in the region, I'm saying UA because that's where the conference is and that's where we are based, that's where our office is. Anyone who's traveled to the UA, I think sees the professionalism, sees that it's as good as the best in the world, in many cases even better, leading the world. Like the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, the recent advertisements that you may have seen of the Burj Khalifa, Will Smith climbing up the entire 100 plus floors, the Emirates ad with the Emirates air hostess on top of the world, literally standing on top of the Burj Khalifa. You don't get to do those things if you don't have vision. So I think the Middle East has vision.
they've got uh, capability, they've got guts, they've got the desire. And when it comes to business continuity, the UAE is one of the few countries in the world where business continuity is mandatory. There's a UAE standard in English and Arabic, and everyone is supposed to implement business continuity. There's enough guidance and inspections uh, by various regulators. So it's pretty serious. So if you're a serious player in the business continuity industry, the UAE is a good country to be in and uh, the Middle East in general. These countries are serious about business continuity. They're willing to spend. They want the best. If you do provide the best, you should come and take a look. Uh, almost all of them have some serious guidelines on business continuity by and large, either from a regulator or from the central bank or from someone else, uh, Saudi, Bahrain, Oman, Qatar. Uh, there's a good chance quite a few of them may actually attend the physical event. And uh, if Dubai Expo 2020 is anything to go by, then you're up for a great show. Attend the Dubai Expo. It's fantastic. Absolutely. I think that's the word. It's, it's absolutely mind boggling, which is why our event is in March. Come across, attend the event, attend the Dubai Expo. It finishes in March end. Make it a fun trip. Uh, open yourself to a whole new range of possibilities. Join us as a partner for our other initiatives. Uh, expand your markets. I think that's what everyone is looking to do now. So it's a fun market to be in. We really enjoy it. Come on, take a look. Get to know us and let's do some stuff together. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks once again for watching this video. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.